Now, continuing with our Heart Month theme, we turn to those affairs of the heart and welcome another doctor to the program, psychologist and author Brenda Schaefer. Dr. Schaefer has appeared on a variety of national television and radio shows, as well as being featured in a variety of magazines. She is author of the bestseller, Is It Love or Is It Addiction? and Love's mm -hmm. Way, among several others. So get ready to take some love notes as I welcome Brenda Schaefer to the program. Thank Hi, you. Hi, Brenda. Thank Thanks you. for coming out here to White Bear Lake. Let's start out with the basics. What is love? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, a, a very important question. And contrary to what a lot of people think, is love is not a relationship. It's not dependency, it's not sex, it's not romance, it's not a feeling, oh my gosh. it's not a thought, it can't be earned, it can't be learned. And it, in essence, it, it is already. And that you do not need to be in a relationship to be in love. Okay. I mean, you can be holding your newborn, you can be out in nature. The important thing is that you have an open heart. But since so many hearts have been injured, we both want to open our hearts and we're reluctant to. And that is probably the key. If we didn't mm -hmm. have these kind of injuries growing up in life, yes. um, we probably would be so much more yes. open to yes. love. You are an addiction specialist mm -hmm. and you talk a lot about love addiction. What mm -hmm. is that exactly? Love addiction is any time we're looking outside of ourselves to satisfy our hunger for security, sensation, power, identity, a sense of belonging and avoid fear and what we do is we collude with other people unknowingly by the way okay. to uh, meet their needs so maybe they'll take care of us and it's so subtle and most of what we see in our culture and on television and in our families is what I call love addiction which can be anything from a mild codependency to a fatal attraction. Wow. So now uh, most of us have experienced that that euphoria mm -hmm. in the early love relationship, that mm -hmm. feeling. Is that addictive? Is that what we're talking well, about? Well, it can be. And uh, I want to say to your audience that sex, love, and romance are delightful aspects of our humanity and a part of the mating. Uh, we, we need to, to be sexually aroused. Of course, we can be sexually aroused by many people, many images. So that does not necessarily mean that we're in love. Mm -hmm. And that's one part of the brain. And then we want to focus on narrowing it down to one romantic object. And when we're in a sexual high or a romantic high, there are literally hundreds of chemicals going off sure. in our brain so that we stay in love long enough to bond with this person, which is the last stage. Oh, okay. And the bond, there are bonding chemicals as well. And then nature takes care of itself and the, the high will wane. We cannot possibly tolerate that high. It would, it would ruin time. us. Okay. Yeah. Well, how do we then maintain mm -hmm. loving relationships? I mean, once we kind of fall in love, and you said love mm -hmm. just exists, but and then maybe we get married or we want to have this mm -hmm. long-term relationship, but then all these struggles come into play. So, yes. so how do we maintain a loving relationship? What are some good things that we should be doing? Well, you mentioned something important, and, and that is how to keep it alive, because we have these two polar opposites. We have this desire to have home, to have security, to feel safe, and we want adventure. And so a healthy relationship is aware of that. And what I tell people is never become boring. Okay. And do adventures. And I think you have to create environments that are conducive to romance. And what happens in relationships after the high goes away, right. then people get into routines and then other things come in their life. There's work, there's children there's uh, other distractions. Absolutely, yeah. So what are some um, tips mm -hmm. that you would highly recommend besides you know, being adventurous? I mean, are there just like day-to-day -day things that we should be doing in our love relationships? Yes. The most important thing is that you feel safe in a relationship. And that means safe to be who you are, safe to have your feelings, safe to ask for what you need, safe to disagree. 
and and to have some rules around that so it's done sanely and, and safely. Another thing that I think happens in what I call love addiction is that we're always power struggling and trying to change the other person to be something we think we need them to be. So acceptance of differences. And we liked those when we were newly in love. Right. You know, uh, of course, we showed our virtues when we were in love, right, newly right. in love. And then the vices show up. So uh, I think good conflict resolution. The other thing is I say that in a healthy relationship, there are three entities, a I, a you, and a we. And the we can only be as healthy as the I and the you. And I think a healthy relationship is when two people understand they don't have all the tools. They're not perfect. They're not going to do it perfectly. And to be able to admit that mm -hmm. and not blame the other person for whatever is going wrong and to, to be willing to take a look at why do I do these things. Right, right. And to be committed to getting help if you need it. That is a big one, isn't mm -hmm. it? Just to recognize if you need some help, there's right. so much out right. there, obviously. Um, doctors like yourself and your books, mm -hmm. you would highly recommend that people seek that out? Exactly. You know, I look at a relationship like a hundred piece puzzle. We're lucky to get 10, 20, 30 of those pieces <laughs> and some of them are dysfunctional. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, how can we possibly do it? And, and yet it can be an adventure in itself. It can be exciting it, to get to know your partner in a deeper way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we also need to take a look at our, our role models. You know, very often they were not healthy and yet we do the very things because our brain absorbs absorbs that okay. information. Yeah. Um, I know several folks who are looking to get married in the near future. What are some things that um, folks who are uh, couples that are looking to, you know, unite in marriage, mm -hmm. for example, what what are some things that they should be kind of asking each other right now or looking mm -hmm. at and be aware of? Because, you know, again, they're right. in that euphoric For, yeah. kind of stage. Mm -hmm. So what would you say? I think one of the most important things is to check out what is the person's image of the relationship down the line. People rarely talk about it, and you have these secret images that you hope will be realized and when they don't that's when you try to change the other person you get angry at the other person and they've never talked about what it is they envisioned right. together what what's the one thing you would say to anyone um, you know looking to have a, a loving relationship what besides just Valentine's Day what what should we do well I, I like Valentine's Day because it gives us permission to say I love you and oftentimes we don't say that True. enough. And to, to realize that love is, as I said, much bigger than romance or sex or, or dependency. And it's a deep heartfelt experience. And so express it any way you can. Appreciate the people you love. We always seem to notice their downside, mm -hmm. but how often do we say, I love you, I appreciate what you do for me. Very good information. And if people want to learn more, um, is there a website that you'd like to yeah. point them to for yourself? Yes, it's www.itsallaboutlove.com or www.loveaddiction.com. Very good. Thank you so much You're for welcome. this great information. And I hope everyone has uh, a lot of love to, yes. to give and get they this do. month and every day. Thank you, Brenda. Appreciate yeah. it.